स्टूडेंट्स माई सर डॉक्टर अंकित चौहान आई एम वर्किंग एज अ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट यू एन मेहता इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कार्डियोलॉजी एंड रिसर्च सेंटर इन अ फर्स्ट टॉपिक वी डिस्कस अबाउट थोरेसिक एनेस्थीशिया इन अ सेकेंड पार्ट वी डिस्कस अबाउट पोस्ट थोरेसिक सर्जरी पेन मैनेजमेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इंट्रोडक्शन पोस्टेरोटल थोरेकोटोमी इज अमोंग द मोस्ट पेनफुल इंसिजन एंड पेशेंट कैन सफर considerable pain in the post operative period if analgesia is not managed appropriately poorly treated post thoracotomy pain greatly reduces patient satisfaction and their quality of life under treated pain can also reduce the patient's ability to cooperate with post operative physiotherapy and remobilization effective pain control can facilitate a reduction in post operative complications particularly post operative pulmonary complications over the years a large number of drugs different combination of drugs and technique to deliver these drugs have been developed and used to control the post thoracotomy pain but unfortunately no technique has emerged as the safest during uh, uh, early uh, 90s there is opioid then uh, during uh, 70 80 there is uh, thoracic epidural and 90s paravertebral block emerge as a gold standard for post thoracic pain management few randomized studies have compared outcome after thoracic epidural analgesia or paravertebral blocks the limited results available however suggested that paravertebral blocks may uh, be are the more effective at reducing respiratory complications then the thoracic epidural analgesia and after the first few hours provide equivalent analgesia now pathophysiology of post thoracotomy pain uh, as a figure showing the uh, retractor applied and uh, 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 which causes direct injury to the ribs and neurovascular intercostal bundle along with injuries to the anterior and posterior intercostal articulations during the thoracotomy the pathogenesis for uh, uh, of post thoracotomy pain is complex the nociceptive receptors are stimulated by different uh, stimulant like skin incision division and retraction of the muscles retraction and fracture of ribs ligament costochondral joint dislocated and intercostal nerve injured and the incised pleura are frequently irritated by the partial surgical stripping chest strains and residual pleural blood the resulting inflammatory response activate further noise receptors these are the different path that uh, stimulate uh, post thoracotomy pain the central transmission of these multiple noise receptive signals amplifies pain transmission and increase pain perception through central sensitization surgical wound is subject to continue movement as the patient breathes and ventilation is adversely affected Uh, inspiration stretches the injured structures initiating the reflex contraction of the expiratory muscle normally expiration is a passive process but uh, uh, during this uh, post thoracotomy uh, because of this uh, stretching of the injured structure the reflex contraction of the expiratory muscle causes expiration is active uh, again the functional residual capacity falls usually below the closing capacity and airway closure occurs this can result in atelectasis shunting and hypoxia and which lead to retention of secretion and further leads to pneumonia deep inspiration is limited by pain and forced expiratory flow is thus reduced and effective coughing is impaired and sputum clearance is also adversely affected the causes for deterioration in pulmonary function post thoracotomy like uh, during uh, surgical manipulation lung tissue resection hemorrhage and edema in the residual lung tissue distortion in bronchial architecture with uh, resultant lobar collapse gastric and abdominal distension increase airway resistance impair mucociliary clearance uh, residual effect of anesthetic drugs pain related changes in lung mechanics and diaphragmatic dysfunction this all lead to pulmonary function deterioration post thoracotomy noise receptive transmission via uh, c and a delta fiber and can be considering in three discrete routes like intercostal nerves carry the impulse from the skin and intercostal muscles 
stimuli from lung and mediastinum are carried by the vagus nerve and the visceral pleura is relatively insensitive except to stretch but the parietal pleura which is highly sensitive to the noxious stimuli receives the innervation from the intercostal and phrenic nerves. So these are the target for our post thoracotomy pain management intercostal nerves, vagus nerve and phrenic nerve. In addition to this latissimus dorsi and serratus anterior are supplied by the thoracodorsal and long thoracic nerve and this arise from the root C5 to C7 via the brachial plexus. So we consider this also. Post thoracotomy pain can be acute if it is up to 30 days and chronic if it is uh, started in uh, 2 to 6 month post thoracotomy. Aim of pain management is to prevent post operative complications, resume the normal activity of the daily living, reduce hospital stay and increase the patient satisfaction. But pain can hinder this and may result in DVT, sputum retention, increased stress response and poor wound healing. Now factors influencing the pain after thoracic surgery, we have to considering these factors and how uh, as much as optimization is uh, preferred. Preoperative preparedness, if we prepare the patient uh, regarding our post-operative pain management plan, the patient's anxiety uh, is reduced and effectively pain management should be there. Opioid tolerant, preemptive analgesia, age and sex, uh, the young patient and female uh, are more prone to pain post thoracotomy, psychological factors and surgical approach. Opioid tolerance probably occurs because of decreased opioid receptor sensitivity and density and upregulation of the cyclic adenosine monophosphate and neural adaptation. Activation of NNBA receptors plays an important role in the development of opioid tolerance. So NMDA receptor antagonist ketamine plays a role in opioid tolerant patient. Opioid tolerant patients are relatively pain intolerant and may have greater difficulty in coping with the acute pain. So we have to uh, increase the opioid dose as well as uh, multimodal approach is applied. Preemptive analgesia aim to decrease acute post-operative pain even after the analgesic effect of preemptive drugs have worn off and to inhibit the development of chronic post-operative pain. The uh, uh, pre-incisional thoracic epidural, paravertebral blocks, NMD antagonist, carbapentin and systemic opioids are used for preemptive analgesia. But different studies have shown a uh, mixed result of preemptive analgesia. Uh, surgical approach, uh, uh, po uh, thoracic, thoracic surgery uh, done either sternotomy or video assisted thoracoscopic surgery or open thoracotomy and transfer sterno thoracotomy, clam cell incision mainly used for lung transplant patient. Uh, in open thoracotomy, uh, the posterior lateral incision is the most commonly used and uh, the different uh, other uh, types of open thoracotomy incision like muscle sparing incision and anterior incision. Now coming to the analgesic part, we have different analgesic drugs. Uh, first is systemic opioid and other is non-opioid analgesic drugs which include NSAIDs, COX-2 inhibitors, acetaminophen, NMD antagonists like uh, ketamine, gabapentin and glucocorticoids. We will go one by one. Uh, first is systemic opioids. Uh, it is used in the past as a mainstay of post thoracotomy analgesia. However, the pain control achieved was often poor. The balance between the beneficial effect like analgesia, enabling passive expiration, prevention of splinting and the detrimental effect like sedation, suppression of ventilation, coughing, uh, signing is to be achieved. So we have to balance between this and uh, try to modify dose according to this. IV PCA system provides superior analgesia and improve the patient satisfaction. Coming to NSAIDs, NSAIDs reduce the inflammatory response to surgical trauma, have a peripheral non prostaglandin analgesic effect and act centrally in part by inhibiting the prostaglandin synthesis in the spinal cord. The side effects of NSAID are GI uh, mucosal damage, renal tubular damage and platelet dysfunction. Significantly improve pain control in patients receiving systemic opioid post thoracotomy. So uh, the NSAIDs mainly used along with opioid. 
uh, not been shown to significantly reduce pain score in patient receiving thoracic epidural analgesia and may be effective in controlling the ipsilateral shoulder pain post thoracotomy in patient receiving thoracic epidural analgesia. Other is COX-2 inhibitors. It is uh, withdrawal because of concern uh, that there was an increased incidence of uh, cardiovascular thrombotic complications when these agents are taken daily for longer period. For shorter period, uh, these complications are not seen, but uh, the overall uh, uh, result of different studies discourage the use of COX-2 inhibitors as analgesia. Next is acetaminophen. Act centrally by inhibiting the prostaglandin synthesis and possibly via the serotonergic system. Also have peripheral anti-inflammatory action. At clinical doses have few contraindications or side effects. It is considered safe for patient at the risk of renal failure and we can use maximum dose up to 4 gram per day. Next is NMDA antagonist. Ketamine is a non-competitive antagonist of fencyclidine site of the NMDA receptor. Post-operative use of ketamine should be considered for some patients, for example patients chronically receiving high dose of opioid. As we see previous that NMD antagonist is a, uh, used as a uh, uh, in patient with opioid intolerant. Uh, the dose for IV is 0.5 mg per kg as the initial bolus and followed by 4 microgram per kg per minute or 50 to uh, 300 microgram per kg per hour. Adding a low dose intravenous infusion of ketamine to thoracic epidural analgesia improves early post thoracotomy analgesia. Gabapentin, it uh, mainly used as an anticonvulsant drug that is effectively in treating the neuropathic pain as well as post herpetic neuralgia. The site of its anti nociceptive effect is thought to be by binding of alpha to delta subunit of the voltage dependent calcium channels. The single preoperative dose of around 300 to uh, uh, 1200 mg is recommended. A preoperative gabapentin uh, use should be considered in patients in whom difficulties in controlling post thoracotomy pain are anticipated. For example, patients undergoing thoracotomy in whom local anesthetic blocks are not scheduled and opioid tolerant patient, we can add gabapentin as a preemptive analgesia. Next is glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids mainly dexamethasone have many actions including analgesic, antiemetic, antipyretic and anti-inflammatory effect. The risk of glucocorticoid use includes uh, gastric irritation, impaired wound healing, impaired glucose homeostasis and sodium retention. The single 10 to 16 mg dose of dexamethasone act as a part of multimodal analgesia regimen. Now we have different uh, techniques including regional uh, analgesic uh, techniques. First is non-pharmacological techniques like TENS and cryoanalgesia and specific techniques or regional like continuous wound infiltration of uh, through the catheters, intercostal nerve block, interpleural block, paravertebral block, intrathecal analgesia and epidural analgesia mainly thoracic. First TENS. It is uh, developed to utilize the gate theory to reduce the pain. Little evidence for effectiveness in adequately randomized studies. TENS may possibly be some benefit after wet surgery. But overall post thoracotomy pain control, uh, TENS have very poor result. And it is not uh, ad uh, advisable. Cryoanalgesia. Uh, while the chest is open, intercostal nerve can be blocked for up to 6 months by application of the cryoprobe. The analgesia is inferior to thoracic epidural, fentanyl and technique is associated with increased incidence of chronic post thoracotomy pain. Cryoanalgesia is now rarely used to provide post thoracotomy analgesia and cannot be recommended. Now different regional techniques like continuous wound infiltration uh, through catheters. In a randomized study have shown that delivering local anesthetic into wound via catheter placed prior to closure can reduce post-operative opioid use and may reduce wound edema. It should however be considered for patient not scheduled to receive local anesthetic infusion by other routes for post-operative pain control. Uh, otherwise, local anesthetic toxicity should be 
uh, there. So we are considering total dose of local anesthetic while using uh, this technique along with other. Next is intercostal nerve block, either a single or multiple intercostal nerve block before closure of uh, thoracotomy incision or a continuous infusion. A small around 5 to 10 ml bolus of local anesthetic will block the appropriate intercostal nerve. But a single shot intercostal nerve block do not provide effective long term analgesia and need to be repeated. So the continuous infusion can be given with intercostal catheter combined with patient controlled analgesia. The systemic uptake of local anesthetic is rapid due to high vascular intercostal space. So limit the dose of local anesthetic. In this uh, uh, approach also local anesthetic toxicity we kept in mind and the dose of the local anesthetic should be uh, managed. Uh, this figure showing the uh, uh, intercostal nerve the starting from the uh, 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 starting as a spinal nerve and uh, divide dorsal rami, ventral rami. The ventral rami continue as a intercostal nerve and it passes between the intercostal muscles and uh, uh, after the posterior uh, uh, axillary line, the, uh, it gives branch to the lateral cutaneous nerve which supplies the skin over the lateral and the posterior part. And uh, uh, the dorsal rami act as a uh, 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 provide the sensory innovation over the posterior part. So during the block we can consider this anatomy and uh, again we, uh, you see the, uh, the uh, neurovascular bundle that vein, artery and now beneath the rib. So we have to uh, 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 provide attention to uh, by giving this block because highly vascular uptake of local anesthetic is there. So we have to consider and reducing the dose according to that. This figure showing the uh, spread of the local anesthetic we given at the inter as an intercostal block as there is communication between the subsequent uh, above and below the intercostal uh, space. So the uh, 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 local anesthetic we inject at one place it may be spread one or uh, two intercostal place above and below. Uh, next is interpleural blocks. In a healthy human adult the two layer of the pleura have a, a surface area of about 0.2 meter square and are separated by the distance of 10 to 20 millimeter and contain approximately 10 ml of pleural fluid. After thoracotomy the volume of pleural space is much larger and contains the blood and air. The effect of surface tension forces is reduced and the spread of local anesthetic is limited and the primarily via gravity the dilution of the administered local anesthetic by the interpleural blood and the loss of local anesthetic into the chest strain further reduce the efficacy of this technique. It is not recommended for post thoracotomy analgesia in adults. Next is paravertebral block. It is uh, now mostly used technique for post thoracotomic pain management. As you see the paravertebral space as a wedge shaped, uh, uh, wedge -shaped cavity which uh, uh, guarded uh, posteriorly by the transverse spinous uh, then uh, 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 rib and the ligament and uh, anteriorly it is uh, bounded by the parietal pleura and laterally it is bounded by the body of the vertebra and internal vertebral foramen. So the paravertebral block there is a wedge shape area which is targeted and in this route the spinal nerve is denudated so the local anesthetic directly act on this spinal nerve. As you see the uh, technique for performing the paravertebral block the endothoracic fascia which is strip here is exposed by the raising the parietal pleura from the posterior chest wall and the catheter is inserted deep to the endocervical uh, endothoracic fascia through the small incision hole created in the fascia. As you see in this figure uh, the uh, right figure showing the spread of the local anesthesia local anesthetic into the paravertebral space. 
paravertebral blockage offer one of the best option for post thoracotomy analgesia the paravertebral space is a wedge shaped area immediately lateral to the intervertebral foramen and it communicate above and below with the adjacent paravertebral space the intercostal nerve passes through the space without the facial sheath uh, where it can be reliably blocked with the local anesthetic at this point the nerve lies outside the parallel pleura unilateral paravertebral block is suitable for pain treatment after lateral thoracotomy and perform either percutaneously uh, or intraop under direct visual control to avoid complications paravertebral block is an effective analgesic technique in patients who are coagulopathy uh, as a epidural insertion may be contraindicated because of the risk of spinal hematoma or cord compression paravertebral blockage provides significantly better pain relief and pulmonary function with less drug consumption after thoracotomy during the first 48 hours the advantage of paravertebral blockage lies mainly in the fact that the concomitant sympathetic and motor blockage are unilateral and are uh, that the opioids are not needed in the mixture this result in less hypotension better preserved respiratory function and less stress response post thoracotomy paravertebral block may need to cover up to 10 segment uh, there are complications of paravertebral block like uh, pleural puncture uh, pulmonary hemorrhage neural puncture hypotension nerve injury and central nervous system local anesthetic toxicity so we have to uh, keep in mind this complications next is intrathoracal analgesia opioid have been used as an adjunct to post thoracotomy analgesia Pres preservative free opioids introduced into lumbar subarachnoid space which provide analgesia extending cranially to varying extent depending on the volume strength bericity of solution and choice of opioid uh, highly lipid soluble drugs such as fentanyl and dimorphine tend to penetrate the spinal cord easily and consequently act rapidly with restricted cranial speed total dose may be the biggest factor affecting the spread and magnitude of effect but increasing the total volume and performing barbotage can increase the cranial spread advantage like simplicity reliability and potentially fewer adverse effect from the systemic opioid absorption disadvantages like increase risk of respiratory depression and post spinal headache last one is epidural analgesia it is a gold standard for pain therapy after thoracic surgery epidurals is more effective than intercostal interpleural or iv opioid analgesia the thoracic epidural between t3 or t8 is the most common site for insertion a randomized controlled trial was conducted comparing epidural analgesia with iv morphine it was found that post operative pain intensity score at rest on coughing and on movement were significantly lower in patient who received a combination of epidural bupivacaine 0.1% and morphine 0.05 to 0.1 mg per ml the pain at 2 and 6 month in the epidural group was significantly lower than that in the iv morphine group concluding epidurals may be effective for prevention of chronic pain after thoracotomy epidural local anesthetics increases uh, segmental bioavailability of opioids in the csf and increase the binding of opioid to mu receptors and blocking of this uh, release of substance p in the substantia gelatinosa of the dorsal horn of the spinal cord the main advantage of epidural block is its sympathetic block which may prevent sympathetic uh, state caused by surgical manipulation and trauma to the cardiac parasympathetic nerves the incidence of af and psvt was significantly lower in patient who received epidural bupivacaine 0.25% than in those who had epidural morphine the combining thoracic epidural local anesthetic and opioid produces superior analgesia compared with using epidural opioid or local anesthetic alone so mostly Uh, it mainly a uh, combination of local anesthetic and opioid used during thoracic epidural <coughs> bupivacaine is a racemic mixture of s and r uh, isomer the cardiotoxicity of r isomer is more but there is no clinical advantage of ropivacaine or levobupivacaine over the bupivacaine 
because plasma vapivacant concentration during thoracic epidural infusion rarely approach toxic concentration in adults. Uh, few side effects of thoracic epidural analgesia from the toxic uh, uh, like a dural puncture, epidural hematoma, epidural abscess and nerve root damage. From local anesthetic, hypotension and motor weakness is there and from opioids, delayed respiratory depression, urinary retention and pruritus is there. So we kept in mind this side effect. Uh, now some factors that uh, favor thoracic epidurals like uh, poor PFTs, extensive lung resection, chest wall involvement, NSAIDs contraindicated and patient preference. In this, uh, when these factors are there, uh, the thoracic epidural is favorable. When good PFTs, limited lung resection, sepsis, impaired coagulopathy, patient preference, fixed spinal deformity or anesthetized patient, the paravertebral block have a superior result. These are uh, dose recommendations for different uh, regional technique as well as uh, IV. First is paravertebral. It has two parts, the lower dose regime and high dose regime. For low dose regime, there is loading dose of 0.3 ml per kg of 0.25% of Leo Bipivacin and uh, maintenance with 0.1 ml per kg per hour of 0.25% of Leo Bipivacin. For high dose, the loading dose is 20 ml of 0.5% and maintenance dose is same but the concentration of Leo Bipivacin is 0.5%. For intercycle inter opioids, the morphine and sufentanin combination is used. Uh, uh, morphine in a 200 microgram and sufentanin 20 mics and or morphine 500 microgram and sufentanin 50 microgram. For thoracic epidural, levobupivacaine or uh, ropivacaine is used. Levobupivacaine in a concentration of 0.1% and ropivacaine in a concentration of 0.15% with fentanyl 4 to 5 mics per ml or sufentanil 1 mics per ml or hydromorphine 10 to 25 microgram per ml and uh, after making this mixture the bolus dose is of around 7 ml and uh, infusion 7 ml per hour for adult patient. For uh, intercostal nerve block the injection site is T7 to uh, T3 to T7 and the 0.25 percent levobupivacaine with ADRI uh, 3 to 5 ml per side is recommended and uh, re use repeated doses or continuous infusion associated with rapid absorption of the local anesthetic. So during this technique local anesthetic systemic toxicity is uh, more chances of this complication. So we kept in mind when using intercostal nerve block. Uh, ketamine for IV uh, supplement of epidural analgesia dose is 0 0.05 mg per kg per hour but when we use without epidural analgesia the bolus dose is 0.5 mg per kg and infusion is 4 microgram per kg per minute and gabapentin as uh, previously said 300 to 1200 mg 1 to 2 hour preoperatively mainly used as a preemptive. So the conclusion is thoracotomy is one of the most painful surgical procedure. The analgesic plan should start preoperatively and the multimodal approach by modulating different pain pathways mid thoracic epidural are the standard of analgesia the extradural intercostal paravertebral catheters are gaining popularity and have excellent alternative thank you